We are indeed, yes. We're going to move on to Alan's step chart. He's been picking Ireland's back row ahead of... That's not a nice, easy, easy job. One, yeah. No, yeah. So, um, basically, we've been going through the... We've done two positions already at this point. We had Mike McCarthy on last Friday going through the second row. Bernard Jackman went through uh, his front row. Uh, so, we saved uh, your uh, back row until this morning. So, we're looking at uh, the, the first position here, which is six. Yeah, well, Peter O'Mahony is the, is the starter. And um, I think re there's a number of guys who can play six. You know, it's... Reese Ruddock, I thought he was fantastic at the weekend. Sean O'Brien can play six. Jordy Murphy can play six, even though he's more of a traditional seven. Um, Jack Conan can play there. Um, there's a load of options there. O'Mahony is the starter, and there's a number of guys then that you can put in right in behind him. Ty Byrne can play six. He can be an option there as well. But I just think Ruddock, um, Levy can play six. It's amazing. There's about nine or ten guys there. That, but I think the front runner, obviously, at the moment is O'Mahony. He's, he's the kind of owner of that six jersey. I'm asking you the same question about Sexton. Do you manage O'Mahony's minutes during the Six Nations in any way? And give other people an opportunity to see how they would I get on? I think there'll be a bit of rotation in the back row. Um, I think there will, yeah, a little bit. But again, you try and tell these guys, well, you're not playing against Scotland or you're not playing against France. Because we you need know? you for the World Cup semi-final. That's why. Yeah, but still, Jared, at the end of the day, they, you know, they don't play as many games as the English or French and... Their game management is quite good anyway. They'll, their minutes will be monitored. Um, but I know the point is you want to see someone else in there in, yeah. a, big, in a big game if and it even, happens at the World Cup. Even different constellations, like what would, it, what would it really look like if we played two sevens and an eight? Yeah, yeah. Just like if I think Levy can do that, Van der Fleer and, and, and whatever number eight. Yeah, yeah O'Brien can do it as well. Um, Jordy Murphy can do it. O'Mahony can go to seven if you were yeah. wanted to, yeah. you know, go bigger options in the back row and stuff like that. In a way, the most difficult position to pick here is who is the fourth back rower? Who is the one who gets on the bench, on the bench yeah. every week because yeah. they recognise that he can play six, seven, and eight? And is it Reese Ruddock? Is it Jordy Murphy? Is it Sean O'Brien? They're all good questions. <laughs> well, let's have a look at number seven here and see who you've gone for on your depth chart at this position. So Sean O'Brien is leading the way at open side with Josh van der Fleer behind him and Dan Levy as your third choice. And, and again, these guys can all argue and say, well, why are you doing that? And I'm van der Fleer is the one in... Screw you, Quinny, they're all saying. They're van, van der <laughs> Fleer. Why am I only at eight? Van der Fleer is the one in, in control at the moment. He was incredible against New Zealand. He's formed for Leinster, is sensational at the moment. And... You know, he's the starter. What about Levy last year? He was incredible. It was a little ankle tackle, uh, yeah. tackle by Van and, Fleer and in the Dupont. middle of the game. It's like yeah. <laughs> and Levy was incredible last year. He was just sensational. And on his day, Sean O'Brien, you go back to 17, then in the Lions tour and the way he played there and what he can deliver from our, for Ireland. And that's leaving Jordy Murphy out. Um, you know, so there's... There's an incredible amount of options. Um, Tommy O'Donnell is another one that if he, you know, I was, I'm, I, 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 I tried to, I think Tommy's a great player, he's been very unlucky over the years. And another era, with all these sevens, Tommy could be in contention for the Six Nations, but he's not. And there's, there's a lot of other good back rowers as well. But I think Sean O'Brien, a fit, healthy and well Sean O'Brien, which is something, unfortunately, we're talking a lot about in recent years, is not happening for him. Um, he's just he's just a different level with his aggression, with his experience, um, what just, he's achieved. I was just checking, uh, Marcel Cotsey started at eight, so Jordy Murphy has been playing seven really He has year. been playing seven, yeah. yeah, but he can play eight or he can play six as well. And yeah. there's loads of great options there, isn't there? If there was, I, I think, Oma going back to the six thing, O'Mahony, he excels with the line out option. You know, defensively and an attacking point of view, that's what gives him an edge. Obviously, he's really good at the breakdown as well. They all have different strengths. Yeah. Not many weaknesses now because they're all top end players, you know, and um, so there's so many different options you can go with there. Let's have a look at number eight. I dare say CJ Sanders is going to lead the way here. Indeed, he does. Jack Conan. And then Sean O'Brien is your third option at number eight. Yeah, well, I think Stander's the one in command, isn't he? And he's the one who's been so consistent for Ireland um, in the last couple of years since he since he made his debut, and it kind of coincided then with Jamie Heaslip um, having to retire, who'd been there for so long. Um, Jack Conan, you know, to be fair to him, he's 
he never lets the side down. He was he had a brilliant game on Saturday against Toulouse and reminded people what he can do as well. And and rotate, you know, bringing over an option like Sean O'Brien or to play at eight, he can do that there as well. And uh, so it's just uh, when when you're asking to go uh, talking about back rowers, there are so many bloody options, isn't there? Well, that's the thing. And I was going to ask you, how do we compare in that position to the rest of the world? You'd imagine that we've got the best back row options in the world at this point. Yeah, I think I, I saw someone at the weekend tweeting that uh, the, the Welsh back rows are talking about Thomas Young, Dai Young's son for Wasp, that he should be in the Six Nations squad in the most competitive back row in the world. I think Ireland probably is the most competitive. Is Wales uh, number two? Uh, probably, yeah, probably. Well, you Lydia is back playing well for him. Um, Falato played really well for Bath at the weekend. Um, Tipperick, I think with Warburton gone, I was kind of thinking, is it as competitive for seven? But then Ellis Jenkins, who's also out for the year with a knee injury, um, had taken over that kind of seven jersey for Wales, but they have a lot of good options as well. But these guys, they're, they're all internationals. And uh, honestly, if you played any any three there, you think... I think the one difference maybe is... is Stander is that he's kind of nailed down that jersey unless he has a really bad run of form. Uh, yeah, I think that Joe's going to just decide that I've seen you deliver for me in all it's the big games. It's harder for Jack past. Conan. Like, to be honest, if Jack, I'm a fan of Jack Conan's. If he started, I'm thinking no issue with that. But I just think Stander has he's gone to a different level. His yeah. game has got so much, so much better over the years. The seven His position skills. is always nailed down by the players fit. They always Whoever's fit, yeah. There's always, doesn't it, there's always one, or, one or two injured. And, um, and again, O'Mahony has the edge with the line like I said. Obviously, his overall play is really good. They're all brilliant players in their own right. And... Do you make the case then, if you're Schmidt, that if everybody's fit at the moment, that actually you keep O'Brien as your sub because he literally is the only one who can yeah, play six, could, seven, he, eight he, he at could the same option. level? He could option. Uh, it could be a good option there. Um, but you can still start O'Brien, have Van der Fleer or Levy or, or Jordy Murphy on the bench and, and rotate it around a little bit there. If if you had to switch him to a, if Stander went off, game. yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not ideal. Um, but I don't know, it's just a, such a conundrum. Um, like Dan Levy, he's, he played at eight for Leinster and people are kind of did that away bat game, yeah, question of whether game. he could, could or couldn't. Let's, let's give it's him, an overall team performance. Yeah. And I'd like to see him play Dan five Levy. or six games there. Of course he can play go. at eight. Oh, no. yeah. Of course he can play at eight. Yeah, all right. Good stuff, Queenie. Thanks very much sure, for that. Sure. That's uh, your depth chart there. We'll um, put up all of our depth charts uh, for you and you can look at them on offtheball.com.